Okay, so in previous videos, we've shown how to compute the derivatives of, you know, f of x equals x, right? We showed that that just gives you the slope of that line, one. We showed that the derivative of x squared, right, was g prime of x equals b times x, right? So you might be wondering what would be the derivative for a function of some other power of x, x to the n. Okay, and so what the power rule says, says that that's your function, right? f of x equals x to the n has derivative n times x to the n minus We bring this power down as constant multiplier, and then we subtract one from the power of your x, okay? And so where does this come from? Right. It's gonna come from basically this limit definition applied to, you know, these expansions of x to the n. Let's start with something simple, okay? Let's do f of x equals x cubed, and we'll show, we will show that f prime is indeed three times x squared, right? This is three to the x minus the x. We'll show that you bring down the power, subtract one from the power, get three x squared. So how do we show this? Well, let's write down the derivative in its glorious formula, right? This limit of the average rate of change from x to x plus delta x. This is change in f on top, divided by delta x. Okay, so let's plug in our formula. It limit as delta x is zero. Our function is x cubed. So I'll plug in my x cubed here. So this is now x plus delta x times x cubed. All that over delta x. Okay? So in order to calculate this derivative, we'll need to factor out this cubic term. Right? And here's where I'll introduce uh, a nice trick that will help you factor out these giant cubes and giant uh, factors of anything like this. Okay, so let's say you had, how do we quickly factor x plus y cubed? So if you've ever heard of Pascal's triangle, this is a triangle that you can kind of write, it's just a triangle of numbers that you can write down and it tells you each row, the, the nth row of this triangle will give the coefficients for the expansion of expansion of x plus y to the n. Okay, so what does this triangle look like? So you start with x plus y, zero. Okay. Well, anything to zero power is just one, right? The first, you know, row of our triangle has just a one. Okay, and then the way this triangle works is then you say, okay, what's on top of that? It's a one. What's on top of that? It's a one. Right. So then, then the next set is x plus y to one which we know is just x, one, one plus one times y to the one, right? This is just x. The coefficients here are just one and one. And then we'll just write down the next one, which is one, two, one, right? That's for x plus y squared, right? Which we've done a few times now. So that's x plus two xy y squared, right? x squared plus two xy plus Right, so the first entry is the coefficient in front of the x squared. Second entry is the coefficient of the cross term. Last is the coefficient of the y squared term. Okay, and then to build the next row of our Pascal's triangle, we can you know factor out y, x plus y cubed, but that's kind of the problem we're trying to solve. So what you do is you add downwards. So the edges are always going to be ones, but then you would add these two, right? To get the number that goes here. This would be three. Okay, and then we would add these two 
to get this number. That gives us another three, right? And then if we were gonna go to the fourth row, we would say, okay, one, then we add these two to get four, we add these two to get six, add these two to get four, and then end with a one, okay? So what that means is that our x plus y cubed, right? The coefficients of this is just this row of my triangle, right? So this is the zeroth row, first, second, and then this is the third row, right? So the coefficients are one times x cubed plus three times x squared y plus three times x squared plus y cubed. Right? So every time you're writing out these coefficients, you start with x at the highest power. The second one, you bring the power of x down by one, bring the power of y up by one, bring x down by one, y up by one, x down by one, so it goes to zero, and then it turns into a one, and then y up by one. Right, so this is the same thing as x cubed y to the zero, plus three x squared y, three x squared, plus x to the zero. Right? And if you were to factor this out the long way, then, then you'd see that this is indeed. Right? So then for you know x plus y to the fourth, we can just read off the coefficients from our triangle. One, four, six, one. Right, so that gives us x to the fourth. One, zero, plus four, x cubed y to the first, plus six, x squared, y squared, plus four, x, y cubed, plus one, x to the zero, y to the fourth. Or rewriting that without this extra stuff, right? This gives us x to the fourth, plus four, x cubed, y, plus six x squared y squared, plus four x y cubed, plus y to the fourth. Okay? So this is how you'd factor it out for basically any, any power you want. You just build another row of your triangle. So if we wanted to do the fifth, we say, okay, one, and then add these two, five, ten, ten, five. One would give us the coefficients for x plus y to the fifth. Okay? But let's say we have our third, so we can go back to open these up. So let's go back to our problem. Back to f of x equals x cubed. F prime of x equals squared. And we're trying to show y. Okay, so we have this limit. F prime of x is equal to the limit. If delta x goes to zero, of x plus delta x cubed minus x cubed over delta x. Okay. And so uh, this was the function applied to x plus delta x. This is the function applied to x. It's just the change in f on top. Right. So now we know this expansion. Let's plug that in there. So delta x goes to zero of x cubed y to the zero, where y is going to be our delta x, plus 3x squared y, plus 3x y squared, plus y cubed. So that will give us x cubed plus 3x squared x, plus 3x delta x squared, plus delta x cubed, minus x. All that over delta x. Right, and now our, delta, our x cubes will cancel. Okay. Then we get limit as delta x goes to zero of three x squared delta x plus three x delta x squared plus delta x cubed. All that over delta x. Right, so we can factor out a delta x on the top. This gives us delta x three x squared plus three x delta x plus delta x cubed, all that over delta x, okay, and so then our delta x's will cancel, and we'll be left with limit of delta x to zero, 3x squared plus 3x plus delta x squared. When I factored out this delta x, this should be delta squared. 
Right, but now there's no delta x on the bottom, so we can plug in delta x equals zero to compute our limit. 3x squared plus zero, or 3x squared, which is exactly what we got when we just applied the power rule blindly. Okay, and so where does the power rule come from? Right? Where does the power rule come from in general? Right, it comes from this expansion, x plus delta x dn, taking the form x to the n plus n x to the n minus one delta x plus dot dot dot, right? Where in the dot dot dot, right, we have, uh, so if you noticed in our triangle, the number of the rows we're in was always this first number here just because of the way these things added up. The nth row would look like one, n, and then a bunch of other stuff, n, one, right? And maybe these ones are hard to compute, but there'll always be a one here and an n here, right? So the first two terms are always gonna be x to the n plus n, x to the n minus one, delta x, plus dot, 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 where all this is, you know, order delta x squared or higher. Right, so all these have delta x squared at least, you know, times some n's, times some consonants, but but really it's just stuff with delta x and more. Right? So this would be stuff with delta x squared or higher terms or higher powers of delta x. Okay, and so if we're looking at the limit, right, our limit derivative. Okay, so if we look at our function being x to the n, right? Limit definition of the derivative, so f prime of x is equal to the limit delta x zero of f of x plus delta x. X is now going to be x to the n, so let's just get to that. X plus delta x to the n minus x to the n. All that over delta x. Right, so if we break down this expansion on top, we'll get an x to the n, a n x to the n minus one delta x, and then we'll get, you know, stuff of higher powers of x, higher powers of delta x, Right, and then we still have this minus x. All that is going to be divided by delta x. Right, so when we cancel stuff out, we'll get limit of delta x zero of n x to the n minus one delta x plus stuff of delta x squared or higher. Right, divided by delta x, right, because these x, these ones canceled here in the previous step. So then if I divide by delta x now, I get limit delta x goes to zero of n x to the n minus one plus stuff of delta x or higher of delta x. Okay, so then when we plug in this limit, all that stuff becomes zero. Okay. n to the x one plus. Okay, so just the power rule. Okay, so this is kind of our proof of the power rule, which says that f of x equals x to the n implies that f prime of x is equal to n x to bring the power down, and then subtract one from the power. So this works for any power, besides just integers. The proof of that is, is much more difficult, but you know you can apply this to any power of x, including you know, n equals negative numbers, 
actions, whatever you want. Okay, let's just do some examples. Let's do I'll just do a bunch of these, right? So let's say f of x equals x to the fourth. Right? So we didn't prove this, but then we just apply our power rule. This gives me four times x to the four minus one, which is four x. Okay, so bring down the power and then subtract one from this. Okay, this works even when the power is negative. Let's say power is negative. So let's say this f of x equals x to the minus 2, right? So in this case, right, so this is the same thing as 1 over x squared, right? But if we leave it as a power, then we use the power rule. That tells us we bring down the power and subtract 1 from the power. That gives us negative 2 x to the minus 3, which is the same thing as negative 2 over x. We apply the power rule to this power, so we pull down the power to get negative 2 here, subtracted 1 from our power, so this became a more negative power. So really the cube, or the, the power on the bottom got bigger, but this was just applying the power rule exactly as written. And we can also apply this to fractions, right? So say f of x is equal to square root of x, right? That's x to the 1 half power. We apply the power rule we get 1 half x to the 1 half minus 1, right? And 1 half minus 1, that's 1 half minus 2 over 2, which gives us negative 1 half. So here we get 1 half x to the half, or 1 over 2 root, right? By combining the negative means you put it on the bottom, and then the half power is a square root. Okay, so this is one that looks pretty different but it's just a straightforward application of the power rule. Okay, and so we'll stop here.